Hey guys, it's yours truly, Kevin Grace. I'm here in Miami at um, a cemetery called Our Lady of Mercy Catholic Cemetery. And I came here to pay homage to one of the greatest jockeys ever get on the thoroughbred. His name, Eddie Arcaro. He, he won, um, I believe, at least three triple crowns. And um, he's buried here. He died in 1997. He's buried next to his wife, Ruth. So evidently this is a, a niche and um, uh, the urn is inside. So I never got a chance, the pleasure of meeting Mr. Arcaro, but uh, always admired his great work. And um, he's very accomplished in um, his riding ability. So um, anyway, he's here in the same cemetery as Jackie Gleason and also Kid Gavilan, Geraldo. Gonzalez, who was the welterweight champion in 1952 uh, from Cuba, is buried as well in the cemetery here in Miami. The master, Eddie R. Carroll, retires as a jockey. Oh, he'll be missed by racing fans, this colorful pilot of thoroughbreds, who at age 46 says farewell to racing silks in New York City. In 31 years, our Carol's mounts earned more than $30 million, a record. In some 24,000 races, he finished first in 4,779. With Whirlaway in 1941 and Citation in 48, he swept the Triple Crown, Kentucky Derby, Preakness, and Belmont Stakes. Now the king of jockeys will become a business executive, and the tag rooms will never look the same. That commercial, especially for Eddie Arcaro. Now then, Ed, what do you think of this charge about drugging racehorses to make them run faster? The former chief scientist for the Thoroughbred Racing Association, Dr. John Cater, wrote this in Life magazine back on January 31st, 1955. He says that despite all known tests, quote, Anybody who knows the right drugs can hop as many horses as he wants to at any track in the country and never be caught at it. He goes on to say, I can only assume that dozens, perhaps hundreds of people in racing do know about these drugs and that they are in constant use day in and day out. What about it? Gosh, I, can, I can't hardly believe that. Mike, the, every, every race, in the, every winner in the United States this, there's a saliva test plus a urine test taken of him. Saliva and urine? Saliva and urine. Right after the race or before? Right, after, right immediately after the race. Mm -hmm. Plus another fact that they, they take either the second or third horse in the, in the same race and take the saliva and urine test of him. Now out of 18,000 races run last year, there were only 50 positive cases found, of which none of them were a narcotic such as heroin or everybody has tried to, if they have tried to, to do something wrong it was with dexedrine or caffeine some mild form of stimulant mm -hmm. which i don't blame believe would make a horse win i've taken dexedrine in my life and i think that a lot of people other people have mm -hmm. been on long airplane trip and well, how in the world, then, can Dr. John Cater, who is the former chief scientist for the Thoroughbred Racing Association, make that statement? I don't know. He should get a stable of horses and see how long he'd last. <laughs> it probably wouldn't last two days. Eddie, you're, you're giving racing a pretty clean bill of health. As a matter of fact, when we talked ahead of time a couple of weeks ago on the telephone, we set up this interview. You said, in a sense, yes, Mike, I'd like to come on. Uh, in spite of the fact that a lot of people have told me not to come on. That's right. Uh, because I, I want to do what I can for racing. Uh, you once said in the New York Post, just this year in June, I'll do anything I can for this game. It's been good to me. I owe it plenty. I'll never say anything against it. Could it be that you're being influenced by that loyalty here tonight? No, I don't believe so, Mike. I don't think that racing has anything to hide. I think that racing has really done... Uh, went in, uh, hired a great organization called the TRBPA, which is, uh, has employed, or has in its employment, 90% of the men out of the FBI organization. Mm -hmm. 
I think that they've really done a wonderful job on your, uh, your ringer cases, which they tattoo all young horses, lip tattoo. Uh, every every uh, person that owns a horse on the racetrack is screened before he's allowed to, uh, to own horses. All jockeys, trainers, grooms are fring fingerprinted and screened. So I don't, uh, I don't think racing has anything to hide. They, they really went after their own inward self. One final question. I think it's going to be our final question. And we're coming back to gambling. You say that racing would die if betting, paramutual betting, were to die. What do you think of legalized gambling on a national basis? For instance, a national lottery. I think it'd probably pay off the national debt if you had a national lottery. You're all for it? I, yes, I would be for it. And would you like to see legal betting at baseball games? I'm back at it again on this one. Football games, so forth. Mike, as long as they're, they're going to gamble, I think that they, you should let them gamble so that, so that the states and the government could derive an income from it. And you think the gangsters can be kept out of it? The racketeers Absolutely. can be kept out of it? Right. Eddie Arcaro, I thank you very much for coming and spending this time. Particularly, I thank you from, for flying back from uh, California last night That's to be with right. us here today. Thank you, Mike. Right.